let's say I have a function like my x minus 1. Now you know that two factors can be cancelled if the factors are not equal to 0. So I can cancel these two factors only if s x is not equal to 1. Let's see what happens at x equals to 1. This numerator becomes 0, the denominator becomes 0. So it takes a form 0 by 0. We are not able to simplify this form. So this is what an indeterminate form is. A form like 0 by 0, infinity by infinity, infinity plus infinity, infinity minus infinity. Infinity plus infinity is an indeterminate form because we are not able to add these two quantities because we are not sure what exactly this value is, what exactly this value is. Similarly with infinity minus infinity and similarly with infinity into infinity. So these are some of the indeterminate forms and in limits what will happen is at a particular point let's say x equals to 1 the function will take some indeterminate form but in the question will be asked to find the value of the function at in the neighborhood of x and that may or may not be an indeterminate form. So now let's take questions on finding whether the limit exists or not. Now we, you know that to check for existence of limits we need to check for left hand limit we need to check for limit right hand limit. The first condition is that both of these two should exist. The second condition is that both of these should have the same value. So let's take, let's take the first question. The first question is fx is the question that has been asked to me. Now, first let's find the left hand limit. To find the left hand limit, I'll take a value of x which is just less than 4. I need to find the limiting value at x equals to 4 obviously as x approaches 4. So I take a value of x which is very less than 4 to find the left hand limit. Here h is a positive quantity and h is approaching 0. So this is x is just approaching 4. Now since x is not equal to 4, so I should use this formula. So I'll put the value of x here. It will be 4 minus h minus 4. This gets cancelled. This gets cancelled. I have mod of minus h by minus h and this is equal to minus 1. So the left hand limit comes out to be minus 1. Now let's find the right hand limit. To find the right hand limit, I'll take a value of x which is just more than 4. So let it be 4 plus h. Again, I need to use this formula. Yet again, these two gets cancelled, these two gets cancelled and now I get mod of h by h which is equal to 1 in this case. So you see that the left hand limit and right hand limit both exist in this case but the left hand limit is not equal to the right hand limit. Now since these two are not equal, we say that the limit doesn't exist. Okay. Now let's take a question regarding existence of limits which was asked in IIT J E nineteen ninety-eight. The question is I have to check for existence of limits for this expression. First of all, you see that it's like 1 minus cos 2 theta and you know 1 minus cos 2 theta is 2 sin square theta. So let's simplify this. 
this I can write it as root of 2 sine square x minus 1 by x minus 1. So, it will become root 2 times. If I want to get rid of the square root sign, I will have to put a mod sign and here it becomes sine of x minus 1. So, this expression gets simplified to this expression. Now, as usual, we have to find the left hand limit, we have to find the right hand limit and we have to check for equality of this two. Let us first start with the left hand limit. Again, we take a value of x which is just less than 1, so it is 1 minus h. Let us put that becomes 1 minus h minus 1. It gets cancelled, it gets cancelled. So, I have root 2 sin of minus h is minus sin h with a mod sin it becomes sin h only by this one is minus h. Now, I had told you the series expansions. So, I can expand sin h as h minus h cube by 3 factorial plus h 5 by 5 factorial by minus h. Now, I can take h from common from this and I will cancel this. So, if I take h common, I will get h 1 minus h square by 3 factorial plus h 4 by 4 5 factorial by minus h. This, this gets cancelled and now I put h equals to 0. So, I will get the value as minus 1. Okay. So, the left hand limit is equal to sorry, I had a root 2 sign also here. So, left hand limit is minus 1 into root 2 or minus root 2. Now, the right hand limit. To find the right hand limit, I will take a value of x which is just more than 1. So, let us take 1 plus h. Now, Again, the same approach, let us put that value here. So, I will get sine of h on the numerator and h on the denominator. So, this will get simplified. Again, you can use the series expansion and this you will get as root 2. So, the left hand limit comes as minus root 2, the right hand limit comes as root 2. So, these two are not equal and so the limit does not exist in this case again. So, this is how we saw how to check for existence of limits. Now, assuming that limit exists, let us see how to evaluate a limit. Let us move on to the next topic that is evaluation of limits. Okay. Let us say, I have given you a function x square minus 2x plus 3 and I ask you what is this x approaches 1. You know this is a quadratic function, something like this. So, just I am asking what is the value, let us say this point is 1. So, I am asking what is the value the function is approaching as I am approaching 1. So, to find this, you can see this is a continuous function and this is not having an elastic or erotic behavior. So, to find the value, I can just put 1. So, I, if I put 1, it becomes 1 minus 2 plus 3 and that becomes 2. Okay? I can just put the value x equals to 1. Or I could have done it like 1 minus or 1 plus h square to 1 plus h plus 3 because I am not exactly concerned with what the value is it is at x equals to 1, I am concerned in the neighborhood. So, I could have started like this, but since this has a smooth curve here, I could have, I can just put 1. So, this is the value. Now, in cases, what happens is, in some cases, like let us say, I have an example like x square minus 3x plus 2 by x minus 1. In this case, if I ask you, what is the value as x approaches 1? Now, here if you just put 1, you will see that the function takes 0 by 0 form. So, in evaluation of limits, we will see how to 
evaluate a limit for cases like this where the function is taking some indeterminate form at that point and i had already said what indeterminate form is what are the some of the important indeterminate forms so let's start with evaluation of limits